And thank you for joining our Mia Alicia Power Hour call that happens once a month, um, generally in the second week of the month on Monday at 11 o'clock. And we'll always communicate to you if that time changes or if there's a different day because of travel or whatnot. Annalise is here with me, and she just returned from her week-long trip, which was very, very successful out in Canada, um, and uh, went to several different places and had several different meetings that were very well attended and just had a lot of fun with the leaders out there and with the general um, customers and others that came, interested uh, designers that came, and we've had several sign-ups and a lot of success from that. So. Just um, outstanding job, Team Canada, on that trip with Annalise. Um, this week, Annalise will be heading out um, to join our, one of our designers, Autumn Lexer, out in Pennsylvania, and she'll be judging the Miss Teen Pennsylvania pageant. So that's going to be very exciting. We'll try to post some videos and pictures as Annalise is able to get them. She leaves for that on Wednesday. So um, really exciting opportunity to be able to um, you know, get me Alicia out there and start getting that recognition, which will help us grow. And so just really exciting uh, things going on. Uh, this morning I just have an update. I wanted to talk to you about the June promo, share a little bit about our upcoming promo strategy that will be launching in July as well um, with some different ideas there. We are um, have some exciting automa automation going on with the promo, so you can look forward to that. I'll talk about that in a second. Also, wanted to talk about just a general state of the company update, give you guys some idea of how we're growing and what we're doing and, and those things. Uh, before I did that, I thought I would take just a few minutes to talk to you about the importance of having a goal, uh, having something that you're working towards, having something that you're working for. It is not only critical, but if you don't do it or don't have it, it's very difficult to keep yourself focused and motivated. You can go to all the training in the world. You can take on all the training in the world. But if you don't have something that gets you out of bed in the morning that you're working towards or a reason that you're getting after um, your Mia Alicia business to accomplish something, it's very difficult to stay focused, as I mentioned before. When I was 12 years old, actually, let me back up a little bit. When I was 10 years old, I grew up in Southern California. My mom and dad, uh, my dad, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad had a decent job, was an engineer, um, didn't make a ton of money, was a low-level engineer, um, you know, but we had six kids, and we lived in Southern California, and I was the oldest, and we didn't have a lot of extra money. We had enough money to um, get our clothes, you know, at Kmart, and to go to school and uh, buy lunches and things like that, but that was about it. There wasn't a lot of extra sports camps or youth camps or any of that stuff. We never went out to eat. And so I really, really wanted an aquarium. Um, I loved fish. I used to always go fishing with my dad, and I thought it would be the coolest thing to have an aquarium. And I got this idea in my head. Notice that what I wanted or what motivated me came into my head long before I did anything about it. So, you know, that was the first step, right? I had something in my mind that I wanted to get. Well, I was 10, and I couldn't go get a job, and I knew that. And so I wasn't going to – I couldn't work at home. My parents didn't have any extra money to give me. I remember the fish aquarium was $30, and they had it at – um, Stater Brothers, which was a little grocery store, and I could walk there. It was about a mile away. And I would go down and I would look at it and I would check it out, and I thought, I'm going to figure out a way. So I decided, now I don't recommend this for your children, but I decided that I was not going to eat lunch. I got a dollar a day from my mom to go to buy lunch at, at school. And so I figured out that if I, for 30 school days, if I saved my lunch money, I would have enough to buy the fish aquarium. And I had, that was problem number one. Problem number two was that my mom and dad would not let me have a fish aquarium in the house. They forbid it. They said, you can't keep it in the house. So I approached my neighbor, and I asked her if I, could, if I bought a fish aquarium, if I could keep it at her house. And somehow I must have been a salesperson because she agreed after talking to her, maybe because I was a cute little kid with a bowl cut, and she thought I was cool. 
And so I, she said I could uh, uh, keep my fish aquarium at her house. So I did it. I didn't eat lunch for 30 school days. I would eat a really good breakfast, and then I would snack and eat when I got home. And I survived. I was okay. And I got my fish tank. I went down and bought it. I kept it at my friend's house. Now, uh, my parents knew about that, uh, not that I didn't eat lunch, but they knew that I, I had earned the money and kept, I don't remember how that all worked, so there had to be some dishonesty in there somewhere, but I um, don't recommend that either. My point being is that I worked really hard, figured out a way, removed the obstacles, and was able to have my fish tank. I went over to her house every day, and I fed my fish, and I took care of them, and, um, you know, and eventually she kept the fish tank because I grew up and didn't want it anymore. But my point being is that I earned it. When I was 12, I got in my head that I would have, I wanted to have a Mustang. And so I went and got a paper route and did that for two years. I got up every morning at 5.30 and I worked hard and I saved my money. And then I went to Carl Jr. at 14 back then, you could start, and I worked 40 hours a week as a 14-year-old, which was crazy, but I worked really, really hard, saved all that money, and I got my Mustang when I was 16. My point being is that I didn't love getting up in the morning to do a paper out. I definitely didn't love not eating lunch and watching all my friends eat. I definitely didn't love um, working at Carl's Jr. every day, although working so hard, I learned to love to work hard. But still, I didn't love I'd rather be out with my friends and doing things, but I didn't. I sacrificed all those things because I had a goal. I knew what I wanted. I got up every morning, and I got after it. That is so critical, team, that you each identify. As many of you are mothers, I know that there are things that you want for your children, that you have a difficult time providing for them. I know that there are things that if you keep in the forefront of your mind, some people call them vision boards, dream boards, whatever, my point being is I think it can be much simpler than that. It can be one or two things that you really, really want to have for your children, for yourself, for your spouse, for your family, for a sister that's struggling, for a brother that just went through a divorce that needs to get on his feet and could use some help. There is something out there that motivates you. I understand that most women are not motivated by money, but I also understand that most of you are motivated by helping and serving others. So this is something that you've got to keep in the forefront of your mind and then break down what you need to do to accomplish this. I know I'm not speaking anything new here, but I wanted to remind you how important it is to stay focused on what you're trying to accomplish. Please get rid of the head trash. I don't care if the months in most direct sales company in the summer are slow. They don't have to be slow for you. You can accomplish great things when no one else is doing it around you. You have to become a leader. And a leader is simply put, is for me, someone that sees what they want and they go get it and they make it happen and they don't rely on others for it to happen. They remove obstacles and they make it happen. And that is so important. Leaders, as you've seen me post before, recognize opportunities and seize them and do something about them when most people don't. And so we're asking you to be those type of people. Figure out what you want, what motivates you, remove the ob obstacles, and then get it done. Don't let the silly things, or as Ariane, I know, calls it, bugs on the windshield, distract you from what you're trying to do or accomplish. All right, let's get to the state of the company. It, talking about April here, as you know, we're always one month behind in our, our numbers because we have to close out the month. Um, and I will also get to the promo here in a second. But we want to start out with just the state of the company, which is that April we saw about 150% growth um, from March, which is outstanding. Uh, April was a very, very good month. We saw about 600 more orders month over month. We also saw recruiting stay pretty flat, which is okay. We need to keep, keep focused on bringing people this opportunity. It, we can't be selfish with it. If it's changing our lives, it will change theirs too. And as we look at just all total number of orders, we're, we're approaching that 30,000 order mark. We've probably already gotten over that in April. We were close. And that is a pretty incredible thing in our first year. That's a lot of orders and a lot of people that have been able to um, take advantage of the jewelry and the concept and the ideal. So the thing that we would ask you to keep in mind as we continue to grow our business is that our competitors, many of them, if you ask people, they will tell you that even after two or three years, 
they were, some of them, one in particular that's a big, big jewelry company today, had about 300 designers in their, um, in their first two years of recruiting. Um, as you know, we're about seven times that. Also, another thing about this uh, jewelry company is at their first convention, they had 30 people uh, in attendance. Um, and that was after they had been in business for two years. Now they're over a $100 million company. So my point being is that you're absolutely helping us build this, and, that, and we're so grateful to you. We're having marked success, record-breaking success. And sometimes when you're working by yourself in a small town in your garage or in your house, it's sometimes easy to not see that and understand that. But every party you hold, every fashion event you hold, every stop and share you do, Every person you recruit helps us and you to really build this dream to revolutionize the jewelry industry and help women understand their infinite worth. Okay, now just quickly onto the promos. Um, June's promos are very similar to May's. For the designer, please stay focused on the elite retreat. We have had six or seven people already earn that in May. You know, we have June and July to get that earned. It is really critical. You stay focused on it. You can accomplish it. You really can. You don't have to have a big team to get it done. You can get it done all by yourself if you needed to, really. When I was 12 years old at a paper route, I won a trip to Vegas all by myself. You can do it. You can win. You can accomplish it. You can set goals. You can make it happen. Second thing for fashionistas, reminder of that is that they get an extra piece that they do between $250 and $499. If they do between $500 and $799, they get two free pieces of their choice. And if they do over $800 at their fashion event, they get a whole style kit for free, which is significant value. That's over and above already the current Fashionista rewards. So just an outstanding promotion for you to really keep those Fashionistas motivated, getting people to their events and working with them to do that. Customers, when you buy a style kit, the same promo that was in May continues. You earn a piece of your choice, any piece, in the catalog for $10. So that is another outstanding promotion that we're seeing several take advantage of every single day. All right, um, just a quick update. We will be going to what we will call quarterly promotions for both fashionistas and customers. So soon here, in the next weeks or so, we will announce the July, August, September promotion. It will be for the whole quarter, and it will be automated in the system. We are hoping to have the automation completed this week, so you'll have to, you won't have to call in orders anymore for the $10 pieces or for the Fashionista rewards. You'll be able to just do those in the shopping cart when you're placing the order in your back office. You'll even have pop-ups that pop up and say you're getting close. If you do this, you'll get to the promotion. So we're really excited about what's coming out, and that should be out later this week, if not early next week. And we'll also pretty soon be announcing, as I said, the new quarterly promotion. We went to quarterly promotions to help you book your fashion events out further and not have to worry about knowing what the new promotion is. So that should be a nice win for you all. Um, I know several have asked for it, and we delivered, so it'll be coming. All right, Annalise is here. She's going to run through um, some of the recognition for April, and she will be coming over to also talk a little bit about her recent trip to Canada and give you a little update. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the recognition for the month of April. We had a lot of good stuff going on in April. Um, so first I'm going to start with our top recruiters. Um, coming in from Canada, Miss Louise Adrian had 16 recruits in the month of April, and that is just outstanding, just amazing. She has blown us away. And then Natalie Gomes had seven recruits in the month of April. So those are our top two ladies in recruiting for the month of April. Um, our top five in volume, we had Jennifer Olney, um, and she had $1,900, and I'm sorry, $1,972. Then we had Linda Mullen with uh, $1,963. Teresa Folliver, $1,828. Shelly Cottrell with $1,341. 
and Amy Hicks with $1,328 uh, in volume. So congratulations, lady. that's out, ladies. That's outstanding. Um, okay, for rank advancement in the month of April, um, the women that promoted to senior designer were Jennifer Goring, Deborah Trendle, Sylvie Joran, Christine Andola, Stephanie Lane, uh, Sienna Zeidel, Shannon Guy, Lynn Chavet, Deborah Chapman, Laura Matriciano, Sarah Bronson, Alicia Shea, Kimberly Somers, and Mary Bunch. So congratulations to you who promoted to senior designer. Um, the people that promoted to executive designer, Nicole Olson, Amanda Kansky, Natalie Gomes, Fernanda Schweitzer, Genevieve Chavus, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Chavustier. 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 <laughs> She's our cute little French Canadian designer up there. Um, Charlene Oldemir. Oldemiru. That's a rough one too. Sorry. Paula Meese and Sherilyn Grant. So those are our designers that promoted to executive. Uh, the designers that pr promoted to pro uh, were Tracy Nelson and Tracy Bonadio. So congratulations there. And then we had one awesome Rochelle Beach that promoted to a senior pro designer. So uh, thank you all for your hard work and for uh, leading the way for all your rank advancements. We are so excited for you and for the success that you're having. Um, next on the call, we are actually going to, uh, to get to hear from Jody Peckover up in Canada, um, who is just fabulous. I had the pleasure of um, and spending a few days with Jody this past week, and she is adorable, just the most lovable, wonderful, successful person, um, and she is just on fire with me, Alicia. She's thrilled to be um, be going, and, and Jody really is one of the reasons that we're in Canada, so we're really grateful to have her. Um, Jody has been helping people achieve their goals for the past 25 years. Uh, she's worked as a personal trainer. Um, and a fitness and a lifestyle consultant for over 15 years. Uh, she sold real estate, um, but she said she's always been drawn to direct selling and went from a hobbyist to working part-time with various direct sales companies. Um, and then after she had her kids, Carter and Olivia, um, she pursued working full-time in the industry. And uh, she actually played a large role in launching another direct sales division in Canada and was very, very successful um, she had huge teams with them. Um, Jody absolutely loves jewelry and loves fashion, and it's fun I got to see her in that environment. She really does love, um, you know, helping women put put looks together and you know helping them accessorize. Um, but more importantly, um, she loves helping women and men um, work from home and empower them to be successful on their own terms. That that is one thing that I absolutely saw shine through Jody is that she truly does care about. Um, people and uh, and and that that makes me so happy and is just amazing to see the difference that she's making uh, in people's lives. So we are really grateful to have Jody. We love her and um, she's going to talk to you about uh, maximizing your fashion event success. So here is Jody Peckover. Jody, are you there? Hi, Annalise. I'm here. Can you hear me? Hey. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am so thrilled to be on the call today. Um, I don't really have much of a voice because I was talking all weekend when Annalise was here. Um, but I'm so thrilled to talk about fashion event success. And um, what I'm discovering here as we're launching in Canada is that I'm shooting for the minimum $1,000 fashion event. But what I really want is to go out and do two and $3,000 fashion events. And what I really believe is that your time is worth money. So you can go out there and you can do a $200 fashion event, but for the same amount of time and effort, why not shoot for the minimum $1,000 event? And uh, you really uh, are able to uh, maximize your profits when you do that. So in order to do that, really there's two important things that need to happen. And number one, it's coaching your fashionista to have the $1,000 event. 
And number two, you're leading the fashion event to have maximum sales and maximum fun, because with fun equals sales. <laughs> Uh, number one, uh, coaching your fashionista. Really, right from the beginning, you want her to have a wish list. Have her focusing on the rewards and all that she can get for free. If she's excited about the free jewelry and all the discounted items, then um, she's going to be working towards that with you. So I always say to my, uh, to my fashionistas, I want to give you the most free jewelry I can. It's so easy to have a $1,000 show, so let's aim for that, Okay. And when I say okay, I nod my head, uh, and, and she'll agree with me if I'm nodding my head. There's a little bit of psychology there. So make sure that you use those words. I want to give you the most free jewelry I can. It's so easy to have a $1,000 show, so let's aim for that, okay? And uh, you can open up the catalog, show her the rewards program right there, or describe uh, it for her, and uh, just let her know that at $1,000, she gets 20% credit. So $200 for free, and plus she gets two items at 75% off. So you know, just let her know. You know, if you do $1,000, it's $200 uh, for free. If you have a $2,000 show, it's $400 for free. I think that's right. Am I right? I don't know. I, I math is not my strong suit, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. So you want to get her thinking about the most free jewelry possible. Also, you want her to think about her friends who love to host, and for every booking. She's going to get discount coupons. So you're going to say to her, you know, let's shoot for that. And if we get three bookings, then you're going to get three more items at 75% off, okay? And once again, you're nodding, and she's agreeing with you. So tell her to over-invite 30 to 40 people to get a minimum 10 to 12. Use FRANK, the acronym FRANK, friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, and kid contacts or contacts through work. Tell everyone to bring a friend. And tell her to keep her food and drink simple. The more food, the less sales. The longer it takes and the less money per hour you're going to make. So tell her uh, to keep the food and drink simple. If it's um, more than uh, a napkin, it's too much. If you need a plate and a fork, it's too much food. It really should be one or two bites snacks that she's serving. So just ask her what she's going to serve. Say, do your friends drink coffee or iced tea? And suggest cookies or cupcakes. If uh, her friends drink wine, suggest cheese and crackers. And just, um, you know, have her partner with you and just say, you know what, if there's tons of food, um, it takes longer. And uh, really, I don't get as many bookings. So if we keep it simple, I get extra bookings, you get extra discounted jewelry. Let her know you're going to set up on the kitchen table. So you're going to have her take the chairs away and also let her know to have fun music playing. So the more fun people are having, the more they're going to shop. Tell her to tell her friends to come prepared to play dress up and wear simple solid color tops or outfits that maybe they want to accessorize. And uh, just tell them to leave their jewelry at home. So really those are the things you're going to say at the time of booking. And I think if you have three touch points with your fashionista, um, that's really key to um, keeping her excited and having really successful fashion events. So one to two weeks before the event, call her and say, I'm so excited about your fashion event. I can't wait to show you. I have a couple of new pieces that I just got in, and we're going to have so much fun. How many people do you have confirmed so far? The key there is to not call her and say, so how's your party going? because that is the kiss of death. If she's thinking at all that she wants to cancel, maybe she, doesn't, she hasn't started inviting yet, it really opens the door for her to say, not good, I want to cancel. So you want to be excited when you call her. And, and, uh, and if, if she doesn't have that many people so far, that's where you can help coach her just to keep inviting and to tell everyone to bring a friend. One to two days before the party, confirm directions, just tell her to remind everyone, and um, those are really keys to um, having your, your fashionista on board. The next thing you want to do is you want to lead the fashion event, and there are some simple systems that you can put in place to do that. So from start to finish, uh, really the key there is having fun at your fashion events. If you're having fun, then the guests are going to have fun. And if you're a new designer, it's okay to be nervous. That's totally normal. Just get jewelry on people and have fun. That's really uh, the, main, the main thing. And just know that anything can happen. Be prepared to go with the flow. So first thing you're going to do, you're going to arrive 20 to 30 minutes early, and you're going to come in the door in one trip because the more complicated it looks, 
the less people are going to want to do what you do. And your hostess is going to be your number one potential designer right there. So it gives you uh, a chance to really chat with your hostess and say, watch what I do tonight. You know what? I think you'd be a great designer. We can chat about that after, about just how simple and fun it is to be a designer. Um, you want her to know to help you get jewelry on her friends and help them make decisions. So really, she's your assistant for the night. And just let her um, know that you'll help answer the door as well. Set up on the kitchen table. Have your checkout close by. You don't want to be in another room trying to take orders. If people have questions, you're right there when you're doing your checkout. And once people start arriving, you're going to get them over to the table right away and get jewelry on them. That is really the key. Um, I always hand the catalogs to them right away and say, this is your catalog to take home. You can um, you know, circle everything you love and, and dog ear the pages. And when you're finished with it, just give it to a girlfriend who loves jewelry. So, um, so make sure that you're handing out catalogs um, and getting them excited uh, about the jewelry. I don't go into a lot of detail at first. I just want them to really get the jewelry on. So I ask questions about what they do for a living, um, when they need jewelry, do they have an event coming up, and really what they gravitate towards. Do they love simple or bold uh, pieces? Do they love silver or gold? Or do they love lots of color? And just helping them find pieces that suit their needs. And I always say, we're going to kick it off in about 20 or 30 minutes. I'm going to do just a short demo. It's super casual. So just go ahead and try everything on. And once I talk to my fashionista and say, do you think everyone's here? I get her to turn down the music, and that's always people's key. They, they know when they, you know, all of a sudden it's quiet. Now it's time to kick it off. And I say, hey, ladies, I just quickly want to kick it off our Me Alicia fashion event. And I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail on our call today, but there's really some key points that you want to have in your demo. You want to thank your hostess. You want to thank your guests and let them know they're one of the first in North America to see this amazing Versa-style jewelry concept. You tell your I story, how you found out about me, Alicia, what you love about being a designer and just planting the seeds for, for uh, becoming a designer. And what I do is I open up the catalog and I tell Annalise's story. I show them the Versa style concept, and I'm showing them the style guides and the style kits because that's my opportunity to talk about, especially right now with the June special. I'm able to uh, show them if they buy a style kit, they can pick anything out of the catalog for $10. I end off by saying, okay, ladies, I'm here till 9 o'clock. If anyone needs to get going, I can take your orders right away. Let me do the work. I'll help you fill out the order form. I take credit cards. And if you have any questions, just come and grab me. And then I turn the music back up. I want them to have fun, and I just go back to um, being a personal stylist for everyone and just helping them make decisions. But really it takes that first person coming with the order. And usually there's someone right away that needs to get going. That's what I love, that they don't have to be there for two or three hours or four hours. Or, and you're not there till midnight either. So what I do is um, really during the party is I look for two people that I really connect with that I think would be a great um, fashionista that would be that my next hostess. So what I do to connect with those people is I get jewelry on them and I say, you know what, that looks really fantastic with this piece and I put another piece on them and I, I say, you know what, why don't we get that for you for free when we do your party and I walk away. I don't let her answer, I let her just think about it and I go on to the next person. So I plant the seeds for booking during the party one-on-one um, -on -one in, a, in a personal way. And I'm always aiming to book a minimum of two at every party I do, one to replace the party I did and one to grow my business. And I, when they get to the checkout, I say to them, I had so much fun with you tonight. I would love to come and do a fashion event for you and your friends. What do you think? And the key is you stop talking right there. So I say, I had so much fun with you tonight. I would love to come and do a fashion event for you and your friends. What do you think? Really, they can only answer in three ways. Yes, which means you book right away. You say, I have next Thursday or Friday, which one works better for you? Uh, you don't want to say, when do you want to have a party? <laughs> because they're going to say October, and that doesn't help you right now. Um, they're either going to say yes, they're going to say no, and that's okay. Be prepared for the no's because 
Some people don't like to host. And I say, no worries, I totally get that. Who do you know that loves jewelry or loves to host a home party and get the referral from them? And if they say, hmm, maybe, I don't know, I'm kind of busy, or I don't know enough people, or my house is too small, then I use the if I could formula. So if I could show you a way that where we could come up with maybe 30 or 40 people to invite, would that make a difference? Um, and, and really try and overcome that objection. If they keep objecting, they're really just trying to be nice. They probably don't want to have a party, and they just don't want to hurt your feelings. So if they object again, I always say, no worries. If you ever change your mind, just let me know. So at, at the party, I'm also looking for two people that I think would make a great designer. Besides my fashionista, I'm profiling. I'm listening. Who needs extra money? Who doesn't want to go back to work after maternity leave? Who hates their job? I'm always listening. And you know what? I'm going to connect with those people too. And I'm going to say, you would be great at this because, A, whatever, whatever the case may be, you're such a people person. You're so stylish. You're so much fun. Whatever it is, I'm always genuine when I, when I connect with them. And I say, have you ever thought about doing what I do? And I give them a, a join me, Lisa brochure, and I say, just take this home tonight, you know, think about it. I would love to chat with you in the next couple of days and just answer any questions you might have. So get their contact info, say, um, can I call you tomorrow? And that, then you'll be able to find out if they work or if they're at home or what they do and just say, um, say, you know what, let's chat about it tomorrow. I don't like to take the time uh, away from my fashionista and her party to, uh, to, um, really to have that conversation with someone about joining. So about 15 minutes before I'm ready to pack up, I say last call for orders, ladies, and then I start packing up. I thank my hostess. I asked her to collect more outside orders, and I let her know we're going to close in a couple of days. So really from start to finish, it's all about uh, coaching your fashionista to have that minimum $1,000 party and then really leading the party. And uh, the successful parties um, are really by design, and I think it's really, <laughs> at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you're out there having fun at your parties. So thanks so much, everyone, for listening, and really all the best. Go out there and book lots of fashion events and, and lead great fashion events. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Jody. That was fabulous. And Jody has had, I think every party she's done has been over a thousand dollars so far. She she certainly knows what she's doing, and she's so so good in these fashion events. So I hope you all took really good notes. Um, you know, do what she tells you, and you will be successful. Um, so thank you, Jody. We appreciate that. Um, next Thanks we so get much. to hear, yeah. Next we get to hear from Miss Ariane Morgan. Um, and so Ariane, are you there? I am. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me on. And Jody Peckover, oh my gosh, I was taking mad notes. You are the queen at uh, at parties. I, I in May, I don't know that this was mentioned, but um, Jody had uh, five fashion events and had over five thousand dollars in sales, personal sales for for May, which is incredible. Um, so she knows what she's doing. So I hope everyone was taking um, notes and and will implement, not just listen to, not just get that training, but actually go and implement it. So very, very, very good training, Jody. Um, you guys, we have a lot of exciting things happening, as you heard Sean talk about and Annalise share, great things going on. And one of the great things that we have going on is our first annual convention. And I know that many of you are already registered, you're planning on attending, but there are some of you who have not yet done that. And my heart my wish today is that you will make a decision to be there um, no matter what I always um, have attended every single annual seminar annual convention for my last company that I was with um, even when I had just joined that company just two weeks before their annual convention um, my upline leader told me that that's what successful people do and, you know, at the time, I really, as many of you have heard my story, I really just wanted to be able to have some extra spending money. I didn't have a big vision. I didn't have big goals, like Sean mentioned earlier, um, how important goals were. I, I didn't come into um, the industry or into that company to be a leader. But I'll tell you, it was because I pulled out my credit card and invested in my business 
and attended, attended that first annual convention, even though I hadn't earned any money yet with the company, even though I hadn't really done much of anything yet with the company, even though I didn't have big goals, I didn't have a big team, I pulled out my credit card, invested in myself because I knew that if I wanted to be successful at any level, I needed to listen to my mentors and I needed to listen and do what successful people did. And I put that first convention on a credit card and some of you, I'm going to talk to you a little bit here about debt versus investment, but um, some of you are, are maybe a little afraid to do that. And what I would tell you is that it was because of that first convention that I was able to see a bigger vision for myself and for my business. I've heard over the years so many people say, oh, well, just take notes for me or tell me what you learned at convention. And you can't take notes on inspiration. You can't take notes for others. <laughs> you can take notes on your own inspiration, right? But you can't take notes on inspiration for others. You can't take notes on seeing a grander vision for others. You can't give that to someone else. You may sure be able to say, hey, I got this great tip um, at this at this training or, you know, this is the new thing that's going to be coming out. And uh, you may be able to do that, but I can promise you that you will not see the vision for yourself and you will not have the inspiration for yourself. You'll also not make the friendships and make the networking connections if you're not there yourself. What I have seen, and I know all of the leaders on the line here will be amening this, um, even though they're on mute, if they were off mute, I know that they would be shouting amen, is that I have never met anyone in this industry, whether it was with my previous company or any other company in direct sales, that was successful and didn't attend their trainings. They didn't attend their annual conventions. They didn't attend their regional conventions. I have never met someone who has been successful who was not plugged in. So what does that mean for you? That means if you want to see success in your business, whether that's hobby time, part time, or full time, you need to be a find a way, make a way person and be at the convention. Not try to come to the convention, not hope that you can make it to the convention, not, oh my gosh, you know what, next year when I'm making more money, I'll make it to the convention. You need to be there not only for your business, but for yourself, your life, your vision, your goals, the things that you'll never know if you don't come. Um, I want to read to you today just a really quick message from Dr. Robert Schuler, And um, he is a pastor for uh, one of the, the biggest congregations and churches, um, yeah, Christian denominations. And he um, wrote something called Debt or Investment that I really like. He said, fresh out of the seminary, newly married and just installed as a pastor of my first church, I was earning a little over $200 a month. When winter approached, I needed coal for the furnace. I went to the coal yard and asked how much coal I would have to buy, how much would it cost, and if I could charge it. About five tons, and it will cost you $75, and we will not charge it, Reverend. You'll have to borrow the money somewhere, for we don't give credit on coal. And that was that. So I went and asked for a loan for $75 for the coal. The banker gave me a valuable lesson in economics. I'll lend you the money for the coal this time, but never again. When you borrow money for coal, you are going into debt. The coal will be burned. When it's gone, if you are unable to pay your loan, there is nothing you can sell to pay us back. When you borrow money for coal or food or the light bill or the water bill, you are spending money that is gone forever. That is real debt. If you want to borrow money to buy a car or a house or to start a business, we will lend you the money. Then you are not going into debt. You are going into the investment business. If you cannot pay off your auto loan, you can sell the car and pay us back what we have coming and any money you have left is your return on your investment. If you borrow money to buy a store and you borrow money for sellable goods to stock the shelves, you are not in debt, you are in business. If you cannot pay off your loan, we will sell the store and the goods. Then there is money left over and we are repaid. You can have the profit from what your investment was. If you have no money left over after paying the loan, you haven't made any money, and that's that simple. It, it was good advice, which was to give me greater courage years later when starting out our new church. How long would it take to collect the money from surplus offerings? Perhaps 20 years. 
so we decided to borrow the money. When finished, the entire development was valued at $1 million. Nearly 600000 was borrowed money. Someone said to me about that time, I hear you folks have a debt of 600000 I corrected him. Actually, we have no debt. We could sell our property for a million dollars, pay off all of our mortgages, and have 400000 in the bank. We don't have a debt. We're worth almost a half a million dollars. Investing in coming to convention is just that. It is an investment for your business. If you want to become a doctor, you go to college. You take out student loans. That is not a debt. That is an investment in your future. When you invest in your business, you put yourself in a place where you can learn the things that you need to do to be successful with your Mealicia business. I want to um, give you just one last analogy. If your spouse or your um, other job, for those of you who have other jobs, or your spouse's job or a significant other's job said to them or to you, you know what, we need you to be at a convention this summer. Your cost is going to be $1,000, but it's going to help you to have a lot more success in your, in your um, job, and it's going to help you to receive promotions, and it's this summer, and you need to do whatever you have to do to come. I know that people, most people would say, you know what, I got, I got told this from my boss today, I got told this from my job today, and it's this summer, and we need to rearrange the family's um, vacation to the week earlier, the week later, um, but this is for my job, this is for the future of our, of our family, of my situation, and I need to figure out a way to get $1,000 so I can get to that convention. If you will treat your me, Alicia business, in that same manner that you would if your job or if your significant other or spouse's job was telling them that, I promise you that this industry will pay you better and give you more freedom than any other job that you could possibly have. So make the decision to make it happen, to make that investment in yourself and in your future knowing that if you are not there, that it is exactly the thing that you needed to be at the most. I know I'll be there. I will always be at every single um, convention, and not just because I am one of the top leaders of this company, but because I know that even myself, I learn things, and I have inspiration, and I see a grander vision for my own business, and I understand that school is never out for the pro. So I can't wait to see you and celebrate you and your success at the Mealisi Convention in San Diego. So. Annalise, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Arianne. That was fabulous. We are just thrilled for our convention. And really, this is like going to be a historical event. This is our first annual convention, really. Um, you know, we had a kickoff last fall, but, um, but this is going to be really our first annual. And you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to have such an incredible time. And really, I cannot wait to meet all of you. Um, that has been my favorite part about um, about building this company is just being able to travel around and meet all of you amazing, amazing women. And it has been just great. So I'm just going to wrap things up here and just talk to you a little bit about um, infinite worth. And I know I probably sound like a broken record, and I'll probably never stop talking about it. Um, but as I travel around and as I share this message um, and I look into women's eyes and um, and, and feel their hearts. I, I have just found that this has been such an impactful thing. Um, and I want, um, first of all, I want all of you, and I know I talk about it a lot with you, um, to understand your worth and your value. Um, it's, I looked up the definition of worth, um, and it said the goodness, usefulness, or importance of something or somebody. And then the other thing that stood out to me, but it, um, that it says that it's a given value. Um, and I believe that we are all born with worth. We're all born with gifts and things that we're good at and, and, um, and things that we've been given to, to strengthen our lives and to strengthen those around us. And, um, and I really believe that if we would focus on those things, um, then all of our weaknesses and imperfections and the things that we struggle with would become better as a result of that. Our business would grow um, as a result of that, and you would be able to impact people's lives um, and so much more. Um, you know, Ariane talks about sometimes that you can't give what you don't have, and, um, and so it's really important 
for you to understand your worth. So what I want you to do really quick um, is just grab a pen and a piece of paper. And I just want you to think about yourself in the most positive way possible. I want you to think of three things that you love about yourself. What are three things that you love about yourself? And I want you to write those down. It could be anything. You could love your beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> you know, you could love any of the talents that you that you have, and we all have them. So write those down. And then I want to. What I want you to do is um, tape it somewhere where you're going to see it um, every single day, multiple times a day. Um, I would probably tape mine on my bathroom mirror, or um, you know, on the back of my cell phone, maybe. Um, somewhere where you're going to see it a lot. And I want you to just uh, do a little experiment for me. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, make sure you, you read those things and you think about those things at least three times a day. Um, and just see if it makes a difference in your life. And then the other thing I want you to do is, you know, we had, Jody gave us an incredible training on the fashion event. Um, and not only is it important for us to feel our value, but it's so important that we're sharing this message with everyone that we come in contact with. You should be talking about our um, mission as a company at every single event that you do, even if it's just for a few minutes. Um, so I would like to challenge you, um, as you're talking about the concept, to point out the little tag on the Versa style pieces that has the infinity symbol and talk about the little card that they're going to get in the mail that says you are of infinite worth. And maybe challenge them to sit there and write. If you want, we sell the infinite worth cards in the back office. You could stock up on those and you could even give those out at your fashion event. And then have them take those and, and write down three things that they love about themselves. Um, it wouldn't take long, but I guarantee um, that they will leave there feeling valued and that they will leave there feeling um, loved and of worth. And that's, that's our, our ultimate goal as a company. I believe if we focus on that and we keep that um, as one of the most important things that we share at our fashion events, that you, again, will have success because of that. They will know that you care, um, and, and they will want you to be successful uh, because, they, because they feel cared about and they feel valued. Um, so that is my, that's my challenge. My, I'm issuing you a challenge this week to post that um, for yourself. And, and read those things at least three times a day and keep them at the forefront of your mind and then to share that at every fashion event and with every person that you come in contact with um, as you're sharing the Versa style concept. Um, thank you so much for all that you do. We uh, adore you and um, we fight for you every day. Uh, we want your job to be as easy as possible and um, I'm really grateful for where we're at as a company. I feel like we are... Um, miles ahead of where most companies are at this stage. And the exciting thing about that is, is we're only going to improve from here. I mean, we're only going up. So that's pretty exciting to think about. Uh, we appreciate all of your hard work. We appreciate you being ambassadors for me, Alicia, and for representing us um, in a good way. Um, I was really excited to be able to go up to Canada. We have incredible, incredible designers up in Canada. And I am, like, just pumped. Um, what a great, what a great country. Um, we're excited to be there. We're excited to um, have all of you in the Mealicia family. So great things ahead. Um, have a fabulous week and um, go out there and make it happen. Thanks so much.